G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in Philadelphia today, here with a new review of Helm Boots. This is part of my re-review series where I revisit boots I reviewed when I started this channel five years ago with the benefit of all the wisdom I've gained making my own boots and resoling boots and visiting factories all over the world and all this other nonsense that I've been able to do on this journey of my little boot YouTube channel. The last time I even mentioned Helm Boots, I think was two years ago in a video on the most underrated boot brands because you really don't hear that much about them. They're a pretty small outfit, uh, they're based in Austin, but they do several things that are very unusual in the world of men's boots that I wanted to highlight in this review of their best-selling Hollis boot, which I got a discount code for, by the way. I got the code of them five years ago, but so far no one has turned it off. They might have forgotten that it's still on, but for now, Stridewise gets 15% off. So let's get into it. The Hollis might do the hybrid work boot, city boot thing better than anyone. Traditional heritage work boots like this Iron Ranger being heavier and chunkier than the Hollis and the preeminent city boot is Thursday's captain boot here and you can see it's uh, it's just about right between the two style wise. The nickel eyelets and luggy sole on the Hollis make it more reminiscent of work boots while the surprisingly pointed toe and slim last make you think more of urban focused boots like Thursday. And the unusual construction that I'll get into later on makes this the lightest of uh, these three boots. This is about 780 grams, Captain's about 810, Iron Range is about 890. They say on their site this boot weighs two pounds, it doesn't, it's like 1.75. They also say it's 6.75 inches tall, it's not, it's not even five and a half inches. But that's, uh, that's fine, that's, that's totally fine. But yeah, it's, it's, it's less bulbous than work boots. It's quite a lot slimmer than I expected, given how chunky it looks on the website. And then there's this famous white midsole here that all helm boots have that makes it instantly recognizable. I really like it. A lot of traditionalists hate it, but I think it's cool and it makes it like one of the things that make it different to other boots. I think it can make it more enticing to guys who aren't that into strict heritage boot looks like the other two I showed. Uh, and it might make you think a bit more of a sneaker. So yeah, it's an it's a interesting stylistic cue that I, I think is pretty cool. The leather is interesting in that it's uh, a total no-name brand, which probably means it's not interesting at all, actually. I don't know, but it's unusual. These boots are made in Brazil, and the leather is from a German-sounding Brazilian tannery called Krumenau. But it's a nice enough leather. It's a, it's a good thickness at two millimeters. It's pliable and soft, but it's clearly oily as well with a subtle shine, and it's plenty water-resistant as well. I know black's a bit boring to look at. Uh, they've got two other colors, though, that come from the same tannery as well, uh, if you want to check those out. But let's get into the meat of the hollers. Besides the white midsole, the most unusual thing about Helm's boots is they're made with Blake Rapid Construction. So, as a primer, the gold standard for boots is the Goodyear welts, where the upper and midsole are attached to a leather welt, usually, usually it's leather, and that makes them water resistant and easy to resole. It's often contrasted with Blake stitching, where the upper is sewn right onto the sole, which makes a lighter and more flexible and easy to break in shoe. It's often more common in dress shoes, uh, but they're not very water resistant. Blake Rapid is like the halfway point between the two. The midsole is stitched inside with the Blake stitch method, and then the midsole is stitched to the outsole. This makes a boot that's more water resistant than a Blake stitch, but lighter than a Goodyear welt. I have stood in these boots in puddles and my socks have stayed dry. It is surprisingly water resistant, this construction. The boot can be resold. Like Blake stitches, they're harder to get resold. Like any cobbler will take a good deal welt. There's a chance you'll need to mail them somewhere to get Blake or Blake Rapids resold, but it most certainly can be done. So yeah, it's a nice midway point between these two styles of making shoes. Now, some find Blake Rapid boots less comfortable than Goodyear welts, partly because they don't have the layer of cork filling that those boots have. So there's typically a layer of cork underneath the uh, insole of a Goodyear welted boot, and that's a considerable part of their comfort because it compresses the shape of your foot. So it makes them feel more custom to you with time. It also helps a little bit with shock absorption and managing moisture and temperature as well. To remedy that, that lack of cork, Helm has a ton of foam in the construction to keep them feeling soft underfoot. So you have the rubber midsole, you have the leather insole, and there's a steel shank for stability as well, and a very thick foam footbed. So it absorbs shock super well and does feel more like a sneaker than I think even Thursday boots because it's very squishy and that combined with the light weight makes it a pretty good option for guys who prefer the feeling of sneakers or who aren't that into typical heritage heavy, Gucci welted, tough break in, leather on leather on leather kind of boots. Speaking of the footbed, Helm puts little quotes under the heel on all of their boots that change seasonally. My old Zinn boots, which is another really popular one that Helm sells, it said, the goal in life is to discover that you've always been where you were supposed to be. That's an Aldous Huxley quote. 
These ones have a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Kind of boot focused quotes, I guess. As far as the outsole goes, you get the leather outsole with lugs attached. I think the idea is that this is more flexible than an all rubber outsole. And there's a nice stacked leather heel made of four layers of vegetable tan leather that makes the heel really easy to repair if you need to. On the subject of durability, there are some people who have said that the top lift is a bit too small, too thin on these boots. So that's talking about the bit of rubber that's underneath the heel here. Uh, it's relatively, it's not super, super tall, uh, which means that as this wears down, you don't have that much time before you're gonna need to get this replaced, which is very inexpensive. It's like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something, depending on where you live. It is, this bit here, it is thinner than you get on the top lift with uh, Thursday boots and with uh, this is this is the day night sole on Oak Street. Even day night, this looks thinner, uh, this looks pretty thin, but it is like significantly thicker and uh, the one than the one you're gonna get on a helm. And also this is a name brand sole on Oak Street. This is day night, so it's known for being like very durable as well. So yeah, the 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 top left on the helm boots, it is it is it is pretty thin. That's that's worth looking at. There are some boots where it's about as thin, but keep that in mind. Might need replacing sooner rather than later. So sizing and fit, order your true size. Do not order your usual boot size. My sneaker size is 11.5, sometimes 12. And my boot size is almost always 11. In Red Wing and Thursday and Wolverine and so on, I'm an 11 in those, I'm 11 and a half in Helm. So your sneaker size is probably your correct size here with Helm. Sizes run six to 16, pretty broad. There are no half sizes after an 11 and a half, lucky me. And uh, there's a wide version available too, which is a nice touch. The break-in wasn't the worst, it wasn't the best. The leather did need some time to soften up, but it wasn't too bad, and it was definitely helped by the softer footbed here. The shock absorption is also very good with all this foam. The arch support is not that good. It's nothing to write home about. After a few weeks of wearing these, it's not forming to my arch very much at all, probably because there's not much leather and no cork in the build. As far as the price goes, it is 295 bucks. Helm is really funny because the pricing has changed dramatically over the years. They used to have quite a few boots made in the USA, like their discontinued Muller boot, which I really liked, uh, but didn't survive the five years since I reviewed it. What am I doing in my life? The Muller had the same construction, but it was made in the USA with American leather, and that boot was 385 bucks. But four years ago, when I reviewed the Zind boot, which they still sell, it was $399, and it was made in Brazil, and with a Dominican leather at the time. That was overpriced. For a while now, most of Helm's stuff is under 300 bucks, uh, this boot is made in Brazil. It is not good year welted. I would give the price a big thumbs up if it were 250 bucks. For 295 bucks, it's okay. Like really, it's fine. Like over 300 bucks, I'd be like, come on, you're not made in America here. 250 is where I'd like it to be. 295 though, it's it's fine. It's not it's not bad. That's full price anyway. But if my discount code is still working, uh, that takes it to 250 bucks, which is good. That is a good price. So pros and cons. It is distinct. It is an impressive balance of work boot and modern city boot, uh, this boot here. It is extra lightweight for a resolvable boot, especially one that's so water resistant. And this is very water resistant, even though it's not Goodyear welted, even though it's fairly lightweight. The sleek last is pretty versatile. The leather's decent quality. Uh, there's not much of a break in, great shock absorption. And uh, with a discount code, if it works, a good price. The cons are the arch support is not good. Uh, it's not bad, it's just not good. Uh, without the cork, it won't mold as well as your foot shape with time. Something people like about boots. There are no speed hooks to help lace them up faster, which some guys hate, but personally, I prefer no risk of like the laces falling out of the speed hooks, which happens to me sometimes, but you might prefer speed hooks. It's harder to get resold. You can do it. It's just probably gonna be more work to get it done, like to find a cobbler to do it. The heel top lift is a lot thinner than I would like. You can anticipate getting that swapped out every year or two, which again is not expensive at all, but you know. Uh, and um, I think that's it. Mm. The, the nickel eyelets and the luggy sole make this harder to dress up, I guess, uh, or even wear like smart casual, business casual. Helm's Zin boot is probably a better pick if you want to do that. But yeah, I think it's a cool entry into the marketplace and not doing what everyone else is doing. And uh, I do always bring up Helm because there are a million and one Goodyear welted boots out there uh, that look fairly similar to each other. And like Helm, like yeah, like rapid white midsole, those kind of stuff. It's, uh, I'm glad they exist. I think it's a cool and unique and refreshing entry into the market. Uh, if you're okay with the cons. I think I'm okay with the cons. That's it, that's my review of the Helm Hollis. Let me know what you think. Uh, if anything here is a deal breaker for you or if you really like this brand, I would like them to get seen more out there because um, there's no one else quite like them. That's it with the Helm Hollis. And stick around, subscribe for more videos on casual stuff that lasts a long time. I'll see you in the next one.